What's going on guys, it's Elias. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. As we can see, we're standing in front of my rebuilt Civic Type R. Finally, it's done, it's back here. However, there are things I still have to do to get it to the finish line and beyond. So I'm gonna still have to do a few things to finish it up. I'm a little bit backed up on videos right now. I will be catching up. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna be keep working on the Type R. Let's go around and take a look at what the Type R needs, what, uh, what it looks like close up, and some of the things I need to be changing immediately. So before we do that, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what it used to look like and the carnage that it was. We got everything fixed up, you saw the car, but it's always good to look back to where we started from last year. And it's always it's almost been a year. This accident happened on April of 2019. Uh, it's currently February of 2020, so it's been quite a while. It was quite the journey and we still got quite a ways to go. So take a look at uh, how bad it was. A lot of work went into making sure this car gets back on the road. So let's take a look at the car, how it sits currently. First and foremost, I wanted to ask you guys a question. I changed the grill. I changed the way the vents look. Let's take a closer look at this vent here. Very different. I had them color here, championship white. And I had them color this part as well. I think it looks a lot better than stock. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, I do love the look. Very much so. Uh, I also have a different grill. I'll cover that in a different video. But this grill right here, this is the, I call it the eBay special. This allows a lot more air to go through to the radiators. And cools down the engine bay a lot more. I do have plans to uh, possibly get uh, some vents on this hood. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do yet, but it is in the plans, it's in the works. What do you guys think overall how this front end looks? Alright, let's get right back into it. Now, besides the fact that I do have to do some cleanup, to have a ton of crap to do, all this stuff has to go away. The Prelude, which is over there, needs to go in here. All this stuff has to go away. We'll figure that out uh, soon. I won't show you guys, I won't bore you with those. Let's uh, dive into this car right here and what's missing. The fog lights currently are disconnected. I'm going to remove them to increase airflow to the brake area as well as to the engine bay area. Those holes are actually pretty good. I may even put some tubing on those holes and direct them towards the brake area for extra brake cooling. Now I know that through down here, there's already some brake cooling ducts. They are there and they are functional. I would like some more, however, to make sure that we're getting what we need. One more thing that's not quite functional that I wish it was, or I may or may not try to fix, is this daytime running light right here, that you see right here, does not turn on, unfortunately. Uh, it's something I gotta figure out. I gotta take this bumper off and figure out the connections. A lot of the connectors that were here before were unfortunately lost due to the crash. It's one of those things that uh, you have to manage and deal with once you are rebuilding a crashed car. Again, I'm not sure if I'm going to fix it. I may just run it with the lights on all the time. If you know, when you turn on the regular headlights, you don't turn on your daytime running lights and therefore you don't have a problem. So I may just do that. I was never a big fan of this stripe right here anyway. I think it makes the car look kind of weird from the front. So uh, I may just leave that off. One other thing. About two weeks prior to the crash, I actually uh, changed these orange side markers to smoked ones. And uh, obviously after the crash, the one that was there before, the smoked side marker is obviously probably still at Shenandoah somewhere. So I don't no longer have it. I will be looking to upgrade this possibly. It's not high in my list of priorities at the moment, but it's one of those things that I gotta take a look at. Now currently, as you see, I'm still running my Koenig Ampliform wheels. I absolutely love these wheels. They look amazing. But they are still on the Federal 595 RSRR tires that I had on when I had my accident. They are bald tires. They are heat cycled out. They need to be changed. But uh, at the moment, uh, it's winter time. It won't make sense for me to put on sticky summer tires on the car over the winter. So instead, I'll have to go back to my winter setup. So as you can see here, you guys are very familiar with this wheel. This is a Sport Edition Tire Rack Special. 
I believe it is the A13 model. Uh, they don't have them in this size anymore. They are discontinued, unfortunately. I know a lot of you guys have liked this and wanted it. Uh, but I was going to sell these uh, in anticipation of a very busy race season. I was going to sell them by a second set of wheel of race wheels. But because of the crash, unfortunately not. So what I'm going to do is, uh, since these tires have a plenty of life left, I'm going to post up all four of these wheels into this car. And we're going to be able to uh, at least store the car and move it around as needed. Because I will be having to take this car to different places to get uh, different things done to it. We'll cover that uh, as we go along. One of the things that I need to get done to it, of course, is a tune. And it's going to be Animated Motor Works down in Southern PA. And uh, I'm going to be driving the car. I don't want to tow it there. I'd like to just drive the car there. It'd, it'd be nice to do that. But uh, you'll see a set of these wheels coming up. Now, one good thing I wanted to mention is while I lost the wheel here, let's take a look at where it is. It's right here. This is the wheel that exploded, completely exploded. And with the, with the amount of impact that happened, uh, this is what you'd expect. This is a very strong wheel to be honest with you. It should have shattered in many different ways uh, Some other wheels might have bent, you know, this one shattered, which is actually a good thing uh, Koenig was nice enough to send me a free Replacement exact exactly the same wheel that I have. I have it right here I've been it's been waiting for it uh, for quite a while. So thank you again Koenig for supporting me in this uh, And uh, they, they're a really cool company. They, they went ahead and supported me I got this little grasshopper here, also wanting to support me. So cool. All right, let's get back in uh, the car and show you what else is coming. Let's go inside here. The door opens very well. The impact was right here. This was all crunched up and terrible. And look how nice it is now. It's all bent back, it's beautiful, nicely done. Thanks again to the professionals at B&H International. Uh, they were able to pull it. They actually broke six chains in getting this pulled back correctly. But, you know, I wanted to show you guys what this looked like. So now that we're in here, I wanted to remind you guys that this seat was actually, I thought, destroyed. But if you look at it, if I can pull it here. Oh, I'm pulling the wrong lever. <laughs> That's why. It is perfect again. It is absolutely perfect again. They professionally stitched the seat completely back. Obviously, it doesn't have the airbag in there anymore. But the seat is completely back to where it's supposed to be. I expected to have to almost throw the seat away. But now, I have the seat back. Isn't that awesome? Now, one other thing I wanted to point out is I already started taking this apart because uh, the seat belt is no longer functional. After a crash, the seat belt pretensioner goes off to hold you in place, as it should, but uh, you have to replace the whole mechanism if you want to use that seat belt again. I won't be doing that since I will no longer be using the seat belt, and I'm actually going to start stripping the interior away. That's right, guys. All of the stuff that you see here is going to be stripped away, including the side side sill right here. This is an awesome side sill. I'm glad we we're able to salvage that. This is actually in danger of not being able to be salvaged, but look at it, it's working beautifully, just as it should. We're gonna take this out, take all of what you see here out, and we're going to sell it to you guys. Now, let me know in the comments if you think I should keep these seats, these Type R seats, or if I should sell it. I'll probably sell these in a pair I'm not entirely sure yet, but uh, I, I don't want to use this seat because I need to use a harness. And for me to use a harness properly, I'm going to have to cut a hole in this seat right here. And I really don't want to cut into this beautiful seat. These seats are really, really nice. Uh, it's a really good upgrade for any of uh, the 10th Gen Civics. It's just a simple drop-in. The seat rails are obviously the same in all the 10th Gen Civics. Uh, Civic SIs can use this. This is pretty cool. Now... As a reminder, it no longer has the airbag inside of it. It's been re-stitched, it's beautifully done, to be honest with you. I love how they did that. You can't even notice it was ever in an accident, which is great. So uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like to uh, for me to keep these seats or sell them. I'm really, really leaning towards selling them since I'm gonna be stripping the entire interior out of the car. 
Ah, it's nice to have a Type R back. So right down here, this is the stock exhaust pipes. I'm probably going to remove the entire thing. The mufflers have been removed, in case you guys are wondering. Um, but I'm going to remove this whole thing, likely sell the whole thing, and then straight pipe the whole car. Again, let me know what you guys think in the comments, if that's what I should do or not. Let's go inside here. Aha! Spare parts. So these are all the spare parts I didn't have to use uh, and were removed from the car uh, as, as, as it was being rebuilt. Some of the mechanical stuff, some of the non-mechanical stuff. I have a steering rack in here somewhere. Uh, I have a number of other things in here. There's a steering rack. That's an old rotor right there. It's actually the rotor that was on the car when I crashed. Uh, some of these things are garbage, so I have to sift through the things that is not garbage. I'm going to clean them up, and I'm going to put them for sale. But everything else that you see here is going to get cleaned up, taken out of the car, and uh, put on eBay. I don't need any of this stuff anymore. The subwoofer, uh, this mat right here, these seats with the red stitching. Uh, I don't need any of this stuff. Uh, if you uh, want to have a piece of this, let me know in the comments. Um, you know, it may not happen for a while. I still do have to take this all apart. But uh, if you are interested in getting something from here, let me know. This is all going to be gone and replaced with a roll cage. All right, guys. So besides that, what else is wrong with the car? The tail lights, for whatever reason, they're not turning on uh, when the headlights are on. I think that's a fuse problem, but we're gonna fix that. And I'm gonna obviously film that and show you guys how I fixed that. Uh, there's a rev match issue, which I'm not sure what's causing. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, research that, take a look at the error codes and fix that as well. Uh, and besides that, I think that'll be it. Oh, I do have to put in new brake pads and new fluid. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Let me know in the comments again what you thought, any questions, any comments, what you guys think. Are you guys happy to see the Type R finally back? Uh, tons of videos, obviously, are about to be uh, uploaded on this thing. So uh, let me know if you're, you guys are excited about that. All right, guys, I'll catch you next time. Peace.